How you guys doing? Good, how are you? Am I sitting in the right spot? Should I scoot over a little bit? Here we go. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I moved the whole chair. Give us an introduction if you could. Well, uh, I'm Gilbert Urbina. Gilberto Urbina. People call me Gil. Uh, I'm the third Urbina brother on this show, The Ultimate Fighter, season 29. Obviously come from a fighting family, like you said. I'm curious, how, how did you guys all start training? Was it just, did you all start training together as kids, or how, how did it start out? Yeah, uh, so basically grew up in Northwest Ohio. Uh, my, we moved out there when I was real young, probably like four or five years old from South Texas. And uh, yeah, my family moved up there. They were migrants, my mom and my dad. And uh, so we basically started wrestling in Archbold, Ohio. So we uh, trained by Coach Beecher, Beecher trained uh, out there at the Archbold Wrestling Club. And my older brother, Hector, he, uh, he was about a freshman in high school at the time. I was only five years old. and. Uh, I got introduced to the Archibald Wrestling Club at that time, and, and I also became the, the manager for the Archibald High School Wrestling Team at five, man. I was, I was washing clothes, I was hanging singlets, I was shit. My coach, the Coach Beecher would actually be whooping my ass too at five years old. Uh, he would make me wrestle the 103 pounder, Magic Kobe, shout out. He probably doesn't even remember me, but I remember him. And uh, yeah, so basically my brothers, it was me and Hector who started wrestling, and, and Eli, my other brother, he, uh, the one in the middle, he, uh, he was a big basketball fan, man. Not so much wrestling. He's like, dude, I don't want to wear the singlet, you know. Eli, Eli's, a, Eli's a funny guy, man. He, he, a lot of love for my brother. Um, yeah, he started wrestling in middle school. So we kind of all just, like, you know, following, following a path but, uh, that my, my father actually made for us. You know, he, uh, he didn't want my brother Hector skateboarding and, and you know, smoking and doing the things that you know those 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 skaters do, you know. But uh, my brother had bigger dreams, man. He wanted to be like a Tony Hawk actor. He wanted to do all the moves and, and stuff like that, the kick flips. And but my uh, my dad actually chainsawed his his skateboard because he knew he was fucking around, doing the wrong shit with the wrong people, you know, the bad crowd. And uh, you know, just growing up and watching watching all the chaos from my older brother Hector, I learned. Uh, the right way, you know, and uh, I stayed busy wrestling, and, and from wrestling, it, it trans translated into uh, fighting. So you were still probably pretty young then when Hector started fighting. So yeah. did you? But when he started fighting, did you know like, oh, I'm gonna do that too? You know, uh, it's it's funny that you say that because like like I said, I've been following footsteps, and Hector started fighting in 2006. I was still in like middle school and stuff like that. Uh, Hector, Hector growing up, you know, he had a lot of doubters and stuff, man. He was kind of like a heavy set kid, had glasses. But uh, like I said, uh, my dad was always on his ass, so he would make him run, put 10 miles in a day and shit like that. Like, he'd be following him in the van, making sure he's not fucking around, going with those skateboarders and stuff, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, seeing Hector uh, grow up and, and uh, transform, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, Hector's on steroids or Hector's doing this and Nobody really understood the hard work that was being done because they weren't there to see, you know. But, but me, I was there, and I, and I witnessed it, man. I, w I witnessed him from his freshman year and sophomore year getting his ass whooped to his junior and senior year beating projected state champs and, and growing as an individual, you know. And you said you know right away, like, you're going to do that too? Like well, to be honest, not really, but I had some, uh, some big uh, – there were some big names out in the Midwest, you know. Uh, Hammer House was one of the big ones. And Mark Coleman, he, uh, he grew up right there in uh, uh, Napoleon, Ohio. So he would go and watch the wrestling matches, and you'd just see all the fans and, like, everybody looking at him like, holy shit, that's Mark Coleman, fucking ground and pound, baby, you already know. Uh, yeah, so it was, it was cool, man, seeing that. And it wasn't just Hector who sparked the idea, but, like, there was a lot of great fighters out there, man, like uh, Wes Sims and, you know, guys that – doing some dirty shit, like Wes Sims stomping on Frank Mir's face and shit like that. Like, that shit to me was just like, damn. I'm, I, I can't personally say I wanted to do this shit, but, you know, like, growing up and, and just seeing how far I've come in my wrestling and, uh, and you know, I've always been coachable and uh, just hungry, man, hungry as an individual to grow and, and come out from the dirt, you know? Nice. So the Ultimate Fighter obviously has played a big role in your family. So, I mean, did you think, like, I'm going to do the ultimate fighter. And then I wonder what you thought during these couple years while it's been away. Did you think, damn, I missed my opportunity? You know, I actually tried out for the ultimate fighter back when they did the tough undefeated. Uh, they, they ended up choosing different weight classes. But I, I, like, I was telling the guys, I, I spent uh, like a 16-hour day just doing uh, tryouts and 
just hoping to get on the show. You know, I did the interviews, I did everything. They were like, man, the third Urbina, they, they gave me the hopes. Every, all the production were giving me the hopes, like I'm the man, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, they were like, we're not going to take the 170 pounders. I guess they weren't interested in the other guys maybe. But they showed me a ton of interest and they were like, don't feel down. Uh, there's still a chance that you guys get a call, you're still on radar. So, you know, I always kept that in the back of my mind. But, yeah, like you said, when, when they got rid of the Ultimate Fighter, I was kind of like, ah, oh, shit, well, I guess – I'm not going to be the third of being on the show, you know, but it never really brought me down. I've always been, like, hardworking and, and uh, you know, just going to different camps. Like, when I started my career, I went to American Top Team, and uh, I got to meet a lot of the guys out there, like George Masvidal. I got to help him with some wrestling. I was only 18 years old when I moved out there. Like, literally three days after graduation, I, I uh, was flown out there by a teacher who was uh, close to my heart. Uh, she flew me out there because uh, – I wasn't going to graduate. I just didn't want to. After I lost at State in wrestling, I wanted to go wrestle for Oklahoma State. And uh, that summer before, John Smith told me, if you win State, there's a chance you might be able to walk on, you know, if the grades are right. And uh, so I was really looking forward to that and wrestling because wrestling was my real, my real goal, you know. But uh, I didn't win State, and, and it really fucking hurt me that I didn't, you know. And... Uh, I remember my dad coming up to me after the, the tournament, and he's like, hey, could that guy beat you in a fight? And I was like, hell no. There's no way, man. The guy beat me because he was stalling out, playing it smart, you know, just like a strategic fighter would. And, uh, yeah, he beat me. So it was only like two months later that I decided to uh, take my pro debut, no amateurs. And uh, my brother Eli, actually, he, he's seen that what I was doing. He's like, hell no. Like, put me on that same damn card. Like, we're both fighting. We're both making our pro debuts. So... We, we, started, we started out in 2014. I had, uh, I had just turned 18, like I said. And, yeah, since then, it's just been, it's been a hell of a ride. That's awesome, man. Last thing for me, I guess, what's I mean, going in here? I mean, what's the feel like? I mean, do you feel like there's expectations that you have to live up to? Or have, have they given you, a, you know, some advice to give you a mindset to relax and just have fun? I mean, what, what is the expectation here for you? You know, uh, my brothers, they, they, they did a good job when they were on the show. You know, Hector came close to – knocking out Cathal Pendred, and Eli came close to beating uh, Eric Spicely, but they both fell short, so uh, just, you know, they, could, they, they probably did give me advice, but I've always just been so focused on what I can do and what I, what I can control, so uh, I've, I've from, seeing, from seeing them, like, fall, you know, the rise up, you know, and come to the ultimate fighter like I am today, and then fall, it's just like, it's just like, man, I just got to do what I do, you know. I just got to flow and not force things, you know. It's just kind of like a way of life, man. Like, you got you to gotta stay strong in the mind, especially in, like, times like these with COVID and, and people being weak in the mind. And it's, it's all about how you, how you view things and stuff. So I'm here, man. I'm, I'm blessed with the opportunity to be the third Urbina. I'm out here sporting these, uh, sporting these goat boots right here. I don't know if y'all can see these. <laughs> Probably can't. Let me check it out. I'll show y'all real quick. These goat boots right here. Just checking out these goat boots. Uh, got these out in Mexico. I'm just excited, man. <laughs> I'm trying to summon my inner Conor McGregor, you know, put the shoes on the table. I do what I want, you know. Me vale pura, you already know. <laughs> we out here, man, Las Vegas, having fun. What's, uh, what's the feeling like of going to stay in a house with a bunch of guys for so long? You know, I, uh, I come from hard times, man. Uh, to be honest, like, I've lived in Northwest Ohio. We've moved many times. Like, I come from a place where, like, you don't really, like, sit. We don't sit in one spot, you know? And, like, even after, like, growing up and, and uh, moving to a top team, I was, I was staying in a fighter house that they called the Dragon House. Then the boys called it Dragon House. It was my older brother Hector's house. Uh, he shared the house with uh, uh, Flyway Justin Scoggins, Flyway Jared Brooks, uh, Justin Edwards, Fast Eddie. He was on The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, Brian Houston when he was in the UFC and and Leo Kuntz he was in the UFC you know I've been surrounded by a bunch of like UFC high level guys and and Junior Hernandez as well and there's just a, a bunch man if I if I forgot your name forgive me but you know just like uh yeah man it, it's it's been an honor to 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 train and 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 live with my bros and other fighters you know it's cool you know I learned from these guys and I'm sure they'll learn from me but one thing I do know is that all these guys are going to get motivated to either fight me or just be around me because I have the recipe, man. I'm a professional athlete. I'm right here with the UFC now. God bless.